the paper's clogged up with muck, it's probably gone blunt. What I do now is I pull that back, I only pull it back two or three millimetres, but now I've got a lovely fresh piece of paper on the corner. When you look on social media, the number of people who hate hand sanding amazes me. I, I love it and I enjoy it. And I think to a degree, a lot of people don't really know the easiest way to go about it. So I thought, well, let me show you how I do it. If it suits you, you can, uh, you're welcome to follow the way I do it. Hi, I'm Graham Clark from uh, Clark Knives in Wiltshire in England. Today I want to talk about hand sanding. So what we have here is a knife which I'm going to show you how to hand sand. This finish on here I've done on my belt sander. It's a flat grind that's been taken down to an A45 gator belt. That's equivalent to about a 400 grit. And there are a few principles about hand sanding that you need to understand. First of all, when I go on to hand sanding now, that, that's been taken down, as I said, to A45 gator belt, 400 grit. I'm gonna start a 220 grit hand sanding. Just a little bit coarser. It just helps me get through. The machines seem to be able to chow into your metal much harder than, than the hand sanding does. So you come back a grit to make a start. Now, if you look closely, you might be able to see the grinding lines down there. It's a bit like a ploughed field. All your grooves are like so. If I now come and sand over the top of that with a finer paper or even a coarser paper, my paper is gonna go down into those grooves and it's gonna tend to polish the sides of them. That's not gonna give us a nice flat finish. So you've got to cut across the top of those grooves, okay? You can't go parallel to them all the time. There's two reasons for that. First of all, by going across the top, you're cutting off the high spots of the deeper grooves. Remember, when you're hand sanding, you're going from a coarse to a finer to a finer to a finer. So your finer paper has got to cut the tops off the ridges of those coarser grooves and provide a new flat surface which has got shallower grooves into it. When you come to the next paper, you cut across at an opposite angle again and it has the same effect. The second reason that we, we cut across is that when you're cutting across at an angle, you can see the old marks underneath so you know when you've got rid of them. Being a metallurgist, I've worked with a lot of dye makers over the years. I've heat treated metal for dye makers and I've talked to them. And what is generally accepted within the business is if you are hand sanding out a groove, remember your piece of grit is like a pointed cutting tool cutting through your piece of metal. As such, it cuts the groove and it dis disturbs the atomic structure of the metal just below the cutting surface. So what is generally accepted by most die makers is if it takes me 10 minutes to sand out that groove, when I think I've got all the scratches, the coarser scratches gone, I'm going to carry on for another 20% of the time it's taken me to get to that surface. So if it takes me 10 minutes to um, sand down and remove all those scratches, I'm going to keep sanding in the same direction for another two minutes, 12 minutes. That's my extra 20%. It helps me, helps to get the, uh, the distorted metal out from underneath that groove. These, I'm talking about guys now who are bringing hard 60 Rockwell Plus plastic injection molding dies down to a mirror finish. It helps to take that extra little bit of time out. So here's how I do it on a knife. I, I have a very fancy uh, hand sanding knife fix vice. It's out of my shed at the moment. Um, and the reason I haven't brought it in is because I want to show you how anybody can do this just working with an ordinary plain bench. I put my knife on the bench. I put a couple of nice strong clamps on the back. To be quite honest, that is enough. I can hand sand that, it's not gonna move in over the place. Now, the, the way I hand sand is, I use a hand sanding stick. Here's my box of hand sanding sticks. Why have I got a whole box of sticks? Let me show you. I flat grind, this is a flat ground blade and I make blades occasionally with flat grinds. But the main blades that I make are hollow grind. I have a hollow grinder, grinding against the wheel and if I'm grinding into that hollow I've got to have something that's going to press my sandpaper 
into that hollow with the right shape. So I have lots of different hand sanding sticks. So here is a flat one. This is just a piece of flat tough knoll. And on the inside is a piece of cork. I'll show you that in a minute, exactly what that is, but that's quite important to have that on here. But when I'm hollow grinding, I need to have sanding sticks, which are the same radius as my grinding wheel. So if you look there, that's a 70, this one's a 75 wheel. So if I've ground on a 75 wheel, you can see the shape of the inside. This one's for having ground on a 200 diameter wheel. There'll be one here somewhere for a 300 wheel. It'll look a little bit different. There's my 300 stick. Hopefully you can see the different radii of the base wood. Don't look at the cork, look at the base wood underneath that I've uh, put the uh, cork onto. It's actually a fancy cork tile that you can stick on the wall of your kitchen, plonk, and have a lovely cork pattern on there. That cork pattern is not what you want. What you want is the base pattern that is on the back. What I've done, I've taken my flat stick, I've cut a strip of this cork, I use ordinary contact adhesive. So now you can see that, certainly on these curved ones, there's my 75er, you can see how the cork has now curved itself to the shape of the sanding stick. Now, at the front of the sanding stick, what happens is we are going to put a piece of paper over the end here. Now, here's my box of paper ready. You can see I've got everything from a 60 grit paper right the way through to a 2000 grit paper, all handily cut in a box. They're 20 millimeters wide. Why do I use a 20 millimeter wide stick? <laughs> Well, it's because I made this box up from some old electrical conduit and uh, I can only get 20 millimeter wide strips inside. There's nothing high tech about this, believe me. So my sanding sticks are 20 mil wide, my bits of paper are 20 mil wide. I've said to you I ground this down to a 400 grit. Let's put these sticks out of the way. I've, on, a, on a belt grinder, I've just ground the tip back. I've got a little bit of a reverse grind on there. So now I take a piece of paper I put my paper on the sanding stick, roll it around the end and hold it with my finger. Okay, and it goes in there and I'm going to start sanding. Now, the reason that piece of cork is on there is the cork has got a little bit of give to it. So as I press that onto my piece of metal, I'm holding up at a slight angle. I'm holding the paper onto my sanding stick with my fingers and I'm using my finger on the top the one on the top is holding the paper in place. Where the paper wraps around the end of that piece of cork, there's a little bit of give in the cork and it allows the paper better contact. And I start grinding away. And as you can see, it starts chowing in. Now, when the paper is brand new, it cuts beautifully. If you look on the back here, you will see it's only been using a small piece of paper, but it goes blunt quite quickly. Going back a step, you'll notice in my box that I've got black paper, there's white paper, there's all sorts. I tend to use what I can get hold of. But I must admit, for the lower end, when I first started learning to make knives 15 plus years ago, the guy said to me, the stuff you want is this cling spore, I think it's PS33, it's an open grit aluminium oxide paper and it's used for sanding wood and it doesn't clog. And I must admit, I use a lot of it when I can get hold of it. It's not so easy to find in the UK. I learned to do this in South Africa and that's readily available there. I don't suppose it really makes much difference. The rest of it is just plain silicon carbide paper. The thing with silicon carbide is, it's a very, very brittle paper. It's, tended, it's used mainly, as far as I can tell here, in the car refinishing industry because it's very sharp cuts through paint beautifully. It cuts through metal beautifully because it's very, very hard. It's one of the hardest grinding grits you can get, but it goes blunt quickly. So I've been pumping up and down there, you saw for 10 or 15 strokes. The paper's clogged up with muck. It's probably gone blunt. What I do now is I pull that back. I'm only pulling back two or three millimeters, but now I've got a lovely fresh piece of paper on the corner and I carry on. And I'm looking all the time now I can see my original scratches off the grinding machine going that way and I can see the scratches off my paper going that way and I'm looking to see when the grinding scratches underneath are gone. Now already those machine scratches are going. 
up the top here. As you can see, I haven't made any fancy finishes on the Ricasso. This is a, actually a demo piece of some Damascus that I make. So I'm not actually making a knife out of it. I'm just trying to generate a nice pattern down the side here. But where the run out is, because I've got that little cutback on the front of my sanding stick, that sharp edge, I ram it into the run out there and it polishes that run out radius at the same time. Now I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on here, you know? I'm no lightweight, believe me. I've got a, a lot of weight behind my finger. You can push on as hard as you like or as light as you like. The harder you push, the quicker your paper goes blunt, the quicker it clogs up and the quicker you're removing metal off the, off the knife blade. But it's coming off and I fold back a little bit and I go on with the next bit again. Now already, I've lost 99% of the machine scratches underneath there, so off the original scratches. So I am almost clean back. So now I'm just starting to move back down the blade. And within two or three minutes, I'm gonna have this side of the blade finished. Now as I'm grinding along, sanding along here, I've got a few deep scratches along this edge. I'm pressing nice and hard to get them out, but I'm also putting a bit of sideways pressure with this stick on like so. So I'm holding it flat, but I'm putting pressure on that edge and it's just helping to get those scratches out of that edge. That's it, they're coming out nicely. Now while we're doing this, because we're filming it, there are some very nice studio lights illuminating the scene. But just make sure you have got a decent light in your workshop. Even if it's just a, a table lamp that you've got to stick on your bench and then shine it on the surface. And when you move your head around, you will see the scratches appear and disappear. If you can still see a scratch, keep sanding it. When you get near the end of the strip, I'll turn it around and work back in. From, I've, I've almost half used it, or three quarters used this one. I'll just turn it around, I'll start from the other end again. I'm such a tight wad, I want to use every square inch on there that I can. I've nearly got this side cleaned up. Uh, as I say, there was 400 grit scratches from the machine belt sander. And I'm working on a 220 paper. And even so, there are a few, some of the scratches, yeah, they're coming out relatively easily. Um, but I like to think my original, my machine grinding is quite good. If you find that you're doing this and you see some deep scratches going across there that just don't want to come out, the odds are that you haven't, that you, where you've been coming up your grades of grit on your belt sander, that you either haven't fully cleaned them out or you've skipped a grit or you haven't spent enough time on a previous grit. Your, and particularly when you're doing your sanding on the machine, you can't always get your angles across it. You know, when you're trying to remove coarser scratches with a finer belt, the general rule is you should be at an angle of at least 20 degrees cross-cutting. So if you've got parallel scratches there, you want to be at least 20 degrees. If you've got parallel scratches going that way, when you go to your finer belt, you want to be 20 degrees one side or the other to get enough of an angle to cut the tops of the ploughed furrows out of your metal. Now, if you haven't got them all out, when you come down to hand sand, they're gonna stare at you. Look, you just have to bite the bullet. You, you've got two choices. You go back to your belt sander and you do a lot more work, or with your hand sanding, you go to a coarser grit. Now I've got a set of grits here that I use. 60, 120, 220, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. Yes, I can go finer if I want to, but if I want to put a mirror finish on at 2000, I'll just buff it and it'll all come out nice and no problem at all. I find for me that those grades work. I never skip one, ever. You know, there's no point, oh, I'm in a hurry, I'm 220, I'll try to get to 600 you'll waste far more time trying to get from 220 to 600 than going 220, 400, 600. 
okay? Some people like to put even more steps in than that. I like to think my hand sanding goes fairly quickly normally because I put a lot of pressure on it. I'm just doing the tip here now. I'm just doing this bit at the tip and instead of keeping my stick up, I'm bringing it down till I can feel it rubbing flat on that tip. Don't forget, you've got quite a small area on the tip, so you can see it's, it's, it's working the, the paper further up on the, away from the front of the sanding stick. But it's the way of getting the tip clean, and then you can bring the stick up, the angle of the stick up again, and just do a little bit in between. If you can get in there, you might be able to see some scratches. There's just a few left on the uh, front there, um, but they're slowly coming out. Now, this is the first step from belt sander, machine grinding, down to hand sanding. This is the biggest step of all, because you're putting a very, very much more controlled, even scratch pattern on the metal by hand sanding than you will ever get on a belt sanding machine. So it does take a little bit longer, but again, and remember, when you see that last scratch go, a little bit longer. Get the work hardened, what it is, the bottom of the scratch. Where the, where the grit has ploughed through the metal, you get work hardening underneath. And if you take that out, it does help you get a better finish. Now, as much as I look everywhere over there, oh yeah, I can see one tiny little cross scratch there. I'm just moving my head around with these lovely lights that I've got shining on here. And I can't, so I'm seeing the odd little scratch. I'm just taking them out because if I take these out now, it's gonna save me much more time when I get to the finer papers. Because if you don't get them out now, the finer papers will make them look 10 times worse than they do at the moment. That one's gone, so I'm doing a bit extra over the top of him. These at the back have gone. They need a bit of an extra rub. I'm not trying to get a really smooth satin finish. I'm just trying to get a nice even scratch pattern coming up and down like that. So now I'm gonna go step down one. So I'll finish with the 220. I'll throw that away and I'm coming down now to 400 grit okay now remember what I said before you've got to get that 20 degree angle if you can so all those 220 scratches are now going straight up and down the blade I've now got to try and get a 20 degree angle that's not too difficult because when I do the next one I'm going to go at a side angle the other way so if I get a good 10 15 degrees that'll do for now and I'll get the rest when I cut the other way so in order to get that angle, I still put my stick on straight, like so, because I want to clean out that, to start off with, I want to clean out this, uh, the run out here, but I simply move my stick at an angle. Now you can see those new scratches are at an angle to the original scratches. That is cutting the tops off those original scratches quite nicely. And they will, they will go quite quickly. In fact, you saw how many strokes I did on there. 90% of those base scratches have gone already because I've only gone down from 220 grit to 400 grit. I've just pulled back onto a fresh bit of paper again. I'm still keeping my 20 degree angle, but I'm keeping the stick square because I want it to bang into that run out and they are going quite quickly. So the hard work's done. The hard work is getting from your belt sander scratches to your hand sand scratches. Now, the run out has come out fairly clean, so now I'm actually turning the stick to 20 degrees. It just makes it easier pushing him up and down. But if you just do a light pass, you can see the deeper scratches underneath, pull the paper back, go over it again, and they come out very, very quickly. That's about 80% of them out. Next bit of paper. That's just about all of them out. So I'll pull back to another bit of paper Go over it again, that's the extra bit, just to make sure that I've got all the work hardened structures out from underneath. And that front half section is now down to 400 grit, beautifully. I put that paper to one side, I'm not gonna go right to the end, I'm just gonna quickly show you. Now I'm gonna move on to take a piece of 600 grit paper. Here I'm back to my cling spore, open coat paper. And again, I'm square on now because I'm doing the run out, but I'm going in an angle the other way. You can see now going from 400 to 600, yeah, it's a little bit more hard work. As you come to finer papers, it can take a little bit longer to get all the other coarser scratches out. But you don't, you, you, I mean, if you want to put extra steps in, you can. 
but it doesn't take that long. If you've been doing this for about 10 or 15 minutes and your fingers are not feeling a little bit achy, then you're not pressing hard enough, believe me. Press nice and hard, it comes out quickly. It doesn't have to be a painful job and you can quickly get down to finer grits. So you keep going and you keep going this angle, that angle as you go down to each grit. If you decide you're going to put a, a nice satin finish on, say you're going to put a, a thousand grit satin finish on, keep going at angles like this. Go to a thousand grit. Now go to 1200 grit, but this time put your 1200 grit straight up and down, like so. When you've got that lovely 1200 grit finish on there, go back to your 1000 grit, and what you do, you just put a fresh piece of paper on the end, you start at the top, and you just run off the end like that. Put a fresh piece on, and go right up to your run out, and keep pulling it down, dead straight, assuming you want a dead straight pattern. If you want a pattern that follows the edge of your knife round, some people do, then you've just got to get good at being uh, manipulative with your fingers. And so you come around the end and you do it like that. But to get that final finish on, always work with a brand new piece of paper, one pass, like so, and you will get a really, really nice finish. And that's how I do my hand sanding. You know, I also hand sand for other reasons. If, I'm, if it's a carbon steel Damascus, I will normally take it down to about a 600 grit um, and get that nice straight finish before I go and etch it. I sometimes etch, there are, there are methods of etching Damascus with caustic soda with a few colour enhancers in it. You can generate blues and greens and reds from your Damascus. If you're going to do that, you really need to go down to about a 1200 grit before you start to do it. That's how to do that is not a topic we're going to talk about today. If I'm going to put a mirror finish on, look, I know people who hand sand down to five, seven thousand grit and say, well, that's a mirror finish. Yeah, it is. I find a buffing machine much easier. And that's about it. I don't think there's much more I can give you that, but that, that should make your life easier. These little sticks work a treat. The cork is a real gem. And if you're watching Alby Want and R, it was you that told me about it and I appreciate it, mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank you to all our sponsors who made this video possible for you. Clock Knives who offer professional heat treatment and Damascus billets for knife makers. And Multitool Products Europe who sell the 84 engineering belt grinders and even heat kilns specifically for knife makers. Links are in the description. Go and check them out. Massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the content that we do and if you find value in the content we create, you can support our channel at patreon.com slash UKBladeShow or links are in the description below.